I'm James. No. <laughs> no, I'm Joanne and this is James and uh, we've just finished working with the girls on uh, a story about the Golden Thread which is uh, a continuation of a short film that uh, some of the students here at St Mary's made a few years ago and we're con continuing the story or the thread in with, this, dioramas. with dioramas. So the project The Golden Thread is basically helping the staff and the school um, continue the story about the sisters and what it is that they are trying to achieve with their education for the students and through that um, there was a story that was kind of little vignettes on different parts of the actual school and their teaching, their inclusion of um, diversity and culture, um, their wellness and also paying homage to the fact of the indigenous part of the, uh, the story as well and through that James and I brought the story to the girls. The girls then had a day where they were designing characters. Drawing. Drawing. Um, and coming up with ideas and set designs for each of these little vignette stories that we tell. And being from a film background, we were able to bring um, like a, a diverse range of skill sets to the girls. And Joanne's we... a cinematographer and I work in the art department. So uh, a lot of experience with miniatures and uh, set design and construction and buying. I also work as a visual artist. Um, Joanne works as a visual artist as well, great photographer and miniatures maker. Yep. So we could bring those skills in. We found that the girls um, drifted to one area or another. They picked their skill and then we said, well, I'm going to be really good at doing this and I'll be good at doing that. And So we actually ran it as a proper um, shoot so we had our departments that we set up to begin with so we had girls that were in makeup who were doing the faces we had girls that were doing hair we had wardrobe we had sets we had props um, and so each department was run by um, like a head girl and then the other girls got a chance to work within that and then when we came to shooting towards the end um, each of the girls got a chance to work in the camera side the lighting side the puppeteering um, and yep. standby props and uh, helping to solve problems on the run. I think that's one of the biggest things that we find that we do a lot of. We've used all the props and sets that the girls made and they also discovered that the puppets, the characters, were not the only puppets. We puppeteered the set, we puppeteered walls, we puppeteered water, we puppeteered clouds and once they'd got that whole broad sort of vision of what could happen they, they really picked up on it and did, did a great job. It's the small things that actually make visually the, the scene sit really well. If they're not there, you, you might not notice they're not there, but when they're there, it just makes the scene feel complete. And I think it was really lovely, the fact that the girls were able to um, see things um, and bring it that we hadn't seen ourselves. And the skills, like one of the girls said, oh, I can do origami, and we're like going, well, that's great. How about you, you know, come up with some characters for this? And so she did the dragonfly and the frog. She also made little wren. So it was really lovely to see what skill sets the girls picked up really well. Even the script development, like, you know, one of the girls was fantastic at reading lines with the girls and um, with Claire. So um, that was a great opportunity for them to, to learn or bring skills they'd learned in drama into what we were doing. So we initially started off with a pre-production day for the girls that were involved with the project to come in and sit down with us and predominantly work out uh, what it is that we were actually trying to achieve from the story that we were supplied by Claire and um, the school with their ideas and so from there... We just got the girls drawing a, a whole variety of mediums and different papers um, and then some of the other girls expanded from that and those first two days set the sort of the basis for where we would jump off when we came back in a couple of weeks time so we had an anchor you know we were able to take that stuff away and then James was able to kind of like we pieced together what these scenes were going to involve and then we brought that back to the girls and that was kind of like um, a storyboard I guess or um, mood board that allowed us to then say to the girls this is where we're heading in the direction for this scene this is where we're going with this scene and um, obviously we're going to need this many characters and um, how are we going to achieve that you know, one, one girl was really good at, at faces, so she was uh, heavily into anime and, and manga. She did 
all the face designs for the nuns and the girls. And then we very quickly figured out that the girls didn't know what a set was. So we decided to shoot one in the first week. And once they'd figured out that even though it was a miniature, it was three and a half metres across and four metres deep, they could see what they needed to do. So we actually, once we'd done that, everything gelled and we didn't have to prompt no. at all. They knew what the process was. They knew how wide the set was. They knew, oh, we might need to put something up in that corner because we might shoot off the set. So they were learning the terminology because I think it was one of their better decisions was to shoot in the first week. Yeah, so instead of actually splitting up like you would do a normal production, having a chance to have the girls build stuff and then see what it turns out like, the reward of it and actually puppeteering and that then spurred them on for every scene afterwards because then they um, could take what we'd already built, reuse as opposed to rebuild completely and it made them a bit more resourceful and a bit more um, understanding of the entire process. I guess what the end result for this is, it's a continuation of the story, the golden thread. And so it's kind of like a part of the story. One that was done by previous students and this one is done by these students. And then there's an opportunity to continue that story in the future and create um, additional parts. You know, we used engineering and we used science and we used lots of maths. And the other thing the too, project. we were able to um, use some of the stuff the girls already had here. So they had laser cutters and 3D printers, but the laser cutting was how we made all of our skeletons. So all of the sort of the marionette skeletons were all made up as a file and then laser cut. The arts teaches people how to think tangentially, how to solve a problem sideways, coming in from the other way, which is exactly the same way that a scientist or a chemist works. We're looking for a problem, to solve a problem, and there are many ways to get to that problem. And the arts is a really good way of training for that sort of thinking. These dioramas will be put up around the school and little QR codes will be put with them so that visitors, students, staff, parents can actually go up and think, well, what is that? What is it about? And, and click on it and actually view the story or the golden thread of what the school's actually trying to um, have their girls take away from their learning. And these skills that the girls are learning now, so these were um, year sevens, we really can't wait to see what they do with these skills to moving forward because I think we're giving them the opportunity to think outside of the box of options to do with a project or how to, to, to best tell a story that they're trying to get across to other students by giving them the ability to use found objects, to use materials, to be quite hands-on and very tactile. Um, I think you know, you, you've got to be able to have a little bit of everything to, to um, proceed. So I'm really looking forward to see what they do from here in their further years in the school. Process for the girls and um, as you can see here we've got a little nun.